What do we do? A podcast discussing wealth management and financial planning. Introducing listeners to the leaders in our community. Hosted by the founder and CEO of Great Lakes Wealth, Dewey Steffen. Alongside WWJ Midday News anchor, Brooke Allen. Hey, I'm Brooke Allen. Our goal with the What Do We Do podcast is to educate listeners on topics that impact your financial growth, your retirement, and your lifestyle. And I'm Dewey Steffen. Join us twice a month as we welcome some of today's leaders in the community for conversations that can help with investment decisions so you can plan for and live your best life. Here's Dewey Steffen alongside Brooke Allen. Hey, I'm Brooke Allen. Thanks so much for being with us on the What Do We Do podcast. This is season two, episode four, number 46. So we are so glad uh, to be bringing this to you. So remember to subscribe, like, and uh, ding that bell for What Do We Do podcast. And Dewey, thanks so much for having me again. It's been uh, so great. Of course, the season's now starting to change a little bit. Fall is here. The kids have been in school for a little bit. How's it going on your end? Brooke, it's so great to see you. Podcast viewers, listeners, YouTube viewers, listeners, it's so great to see everyone and hear everyone and talk to everyone. And Brooke, it is absolutely great to see you. And you are right. Fall is in the air. It is. Football Not, back? Football is back. And uh, the kids are in school, like you said. Yep. Your Twinkies. Yep, my Twinkies. Are back in it. And we are, uh, as we always say, just getting started seems like we're always getting started and we're right. never getting finished. That's good. That's, That's a good okay. Thing. Absolutely. So we're back here and I'm so excited for this episode. You said it's number 46 mm-hmm. and number four of season two. This is fantastic. It is. It's great. And I think our topic today is pretty interesting. It's been in the news cycle for quite a while. And, um, you know, when COVID first hit, of course, everyone was losing their job. And it was pure panic, I think, as far as what we were seeing doing the news and in the news, right? Uh, but now things have shifted. We're still not out of the pandemic yet. But what's so interesting is that the great resignation is underway and it's been happening. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right? So, so what do you think about that? You're a business owner and uh, there's a ma- mass exodus from companies. And what do you say? Well, you're right. We had um, pre-COVID, we had full employment. And then uh, within 60 days, 90 days, we had almost 40 million unemployed Americans, right? And so that was a shock to the system, certainly the economy and the markets, and people were just hoping to hang on. And as we said back then, they wanted to just survive. Right. Well, now, again, we are a year and a half into it, 18 months later, basically, and we are almost back to full employment, around 5.2% unemployment is all. We were up about around 20% unemployment at the uh, height of uh, the COVID uh, situation. And so we're basically back to full employment, right? But um, now we have employees Mm -hmm. that uh, either don't want to go back to work because there was some stimulus uh, to keep them from going back to work, some extra unemployment benefits, right? right? Um, Which helped save the day in 2020. Um, And they have recently expired. So we are kind of interested to see what happens with that. But to your point, uh, employees uh, are wondering if they're in the right job, wondering if they should uh, live their best life <laughs> right? and uh, maybe where they're working isn't it. And so we are now in a situation where employees are um, saying adios, amigos, and leaving uh, their employment. You know, what's so interesting about that is because you always, um, when you're the employee, you are worried your boss is going to let you go, right? Your your boss is driving the train, so to speak. But now it seems like the employees are calling the shots, which is a totally different turnaround from what we've ever seen, I think. Yes, I don't know if it's what we've ever seen, but absolutely from a you know a, a normal you know day experience. Yes, it's something we haven't seen in quite a long time, and we're trying to figure it out as business owners, which I am. Uh, we're trying to figure that out. I think it's. Um, Industry by industry or subsector of the economy by subsector, certainly restaurants, hospitality, other ones, um, you know, there's just, they're they're underemployed. They're really, uh, you know, scrambling. The restaurants only have half the number of employees in the back cooking or in the front uh, serving. So there are other uh, companies that are hiring, like Amazon um, is hiring tens of thousands of employees. So it is kind of industry by industry. But yes, absolutely. Absolutely. there's a whole new approach. Let's call it a game plan. We're talking about the fall and football. Right. There's a whole new game plan. If you're an employee that you might want to consider, 
And as an employer, that you might want to um, wake up and smell the coffee, right? right? For so sure. absolutely, it's a valid topic, and I'm happy to uh, share with the community what we see, what we hear, and what do we do? <laughs> exactly. So do we, okay, the first, you know, we've come up with kind of a checklist of what employees should do if they are thinking about quitting their job. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. If you uh, maybe in the heat of the moment, quit your job and then walk out the door and think, what did I just do? What do we do? What <laughs> right? did I what do? What did I do? Yeah. So um, we have come up with a checklist of what employees really need to think about uh, before they turn in that paper, right? Yes. So as Confucius say, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day of your life. Okay, so with that, yes, everyone wants to find a way to be as happy or content mm -hmm. or be satisfied in their job. And so if you're looking somewhere else, if you're thinking about leaving, and again, the great resignation, there was a recent report that said 93% of the workforce, 93% do not have their dream job. They would look to move. And one in three, 33% are actively looking to move to a new position in a new field even. Right. So that's what's so interesting too, is that people aren't just going to a different company for more pay. They're changing careers. Yes. And so uh, live your best life. Mm -hmm. That's a, a mantra we say around here. Uh, but you also have to, you know, come on, let's get a grip and understand that it's work. As I've always said, if it was easy and you enjoyed it all the time, it would be called fun. <laughs> Guess what? It's called work, right? So we have to kind of understand that balance. If you're an employee, recognize and really go through this list we're going to give you today to make sure that once you've decided it's time to go, that you do go the right way for yourself in case, um, you know, you have to either go back later. Right. And it or, happens. Right. Or just to make sure that, again, you don't burn bridges or just you live your best life. Brooke, as we always do, we're going to give a list, as we've said, but it's not going to be a top 10 list because we don't do that around here. We do not. What do we do? We do 11. 11. <laughs> we do. Yes, we do the top 10 and one more than a perfect 10 is a perfect 11. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give 10 plus a bonus. 11 things employees should consider before you resign your current position. And the first one is to make a plan. Okay. So the first one is make a plan. And by that, you mean evaluate your job, why you don't like it, why you want to leave. And I would think that probably money comes into play here, not so much as far as you're not happy with your pay, but you need money to survive until you get another job. So, right. So the plan would be, again, make the plan because you've already decided you're leaving, right? And so you've, we've, we just did all that pre-work. So we've decided we're leaving, so we've got to make a plan to resign or, and if hopefully you have a you know, plan is that you have another job lined up. Maybe some people are, are resigning and they want to take the rest of the summer off or the fall or the winter or a year. A year, right. So whatever the plan is, uh, make your plan and then you can execute it. So again, evaluate why, mm -hmm. make a change if you need to, but then plan it out ahead of time. Don't just stop in on a Friday morning at 9 a.m. and slam your keys or your key card key on the card, table. Right? That's probably not going to be the best way. Now, again, we don't know every situation that's out there, Brooke, but these would be just, you know, best practices, right? So I really like your second one because I think this is important, especially when it comes to rumors, right? Tell your boss before <laughs> you tell your colleagues. Yes. Right? Start with the person. Maybe tell your spouse or significant other. Tell yourself. Right. But again, go to the office and don't start telling colleagues, hey, I'm going to quit. I'm out of here. I'm going to resign. Just go tell your boss first and foremost. And if it's a situation where you're resigning on the spot, then okay, that's how it is. But otherwise, if it's a two-week notice type of thing, then that's really what it is because of communication, right? Like maybe there's actually a way that they might you know, want you to stay. I don't know. But or maybe willing to work with you, right, if you open up the conversation. Absolutely. So that's where, again, tell your boss before you tell your colleagues. That is uh, step number two of the um, plan before you go concept. What does it say to you as a business owner um, if somebody just quits on the spot and they don't give you two weeks? I mean, we've had that happen here, um, and, and I've, I've seen that and heard about it from others. And so, again, it just depends on, a um, you know, I guess the relationship that the employer has with the employee um, and also what the, you know, the, the backstory is. So whatever it is, um, in my prior life, I did work at a uh, big investment firm, and they had very strict protocols. Security dudes came and with the, the boxes, box. and they just stood there. Walked and you, you out, got, right? You got 10 minutes, walked you out. So yep. there's depends on security. It depends on the company protocol. I've seen I've seen colleagues at other places, like, literally just throw stuff, stick the two middle fingers in the air, and just Ugh. start screaming rants and raves. 
I don't think they're ever going to get a uh, reference from that current Probably employer. Probably not, and so. not, not a chance of them ever going back there either, right? No. So again, this is kind of do this, like we're all adults here. Again, if we're talking to 16-year-olds with employment, consider yourself an adult for this conversation. But I'm right. going to say most of our listeners are adults, and so I would suggest you act like one and do your best to be even better than the other person you're talking to if you think that they're, you know, They've done you wrong, so you'll do them wrong. Just, again, take it up a level. Always have your highest respect uh, in order when you're, you know, present yourself. So that's number two. Okay, what's number three? Think hard, because maybe you're a heck of an employee, and they do. They ask you to stay, and they do this thing called a counteroffer. Oh. Listen, before you go, let's talk. Let's mm-hmm. talk a little turkey. Let's talk a little cash. Let's talk a little green, a little Bitcoin. Let's talk a little something, something. So, again, um, Maybe they will offer you uh, a counter offer and want you to stay because maybe it's about money or about you know hours of work. That's another you know topic for another day. But again, is the nine to five uh, dead? Is the work from the office obsolete? Yeah. Right. So anyway, so the number three is if there is a conversation and your employer asks you to stay or really wants you to consider uh, staying, think about it. You know, maybe you already have, but if not, say okay, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. You know, should there be a time limit on that? like a 24 hour time or, you know, I mean, is it, I know it just depends on the situation, but should employees, if they do get a counter offer, should they have a time in their mind of when I need to decide on this? I think it's uh, probably up to the situation, but I I've learned later in life to go by the 24 hour rule. Maybe 24 hours um, is a good number. Maybe you've already made up your mind and it's done. And you got to right. move on. But um, I think you just still need to, yeah, take a second and think it through if, if you get that offer. So this is something that um, I know in the uh, world of radio, TV, you know, we always want to save our work uh, to prove of things we've done and to show our, you know, award-winning pieces or whatever it may be. Um, But I think that probably goes for every industry. You want to save something to show that you've, what you've accomplished. Yeah. So let's assume you're not, um, you know, being escorted out with the security guards that day. And even if you have, I guess, maybe you can even set some of the stuff up behind the scenes if you're going to leave the right way. And that's really, again, that's what we're trying to accomplish today Mm -hmm. is to communicate that. So yes, archive and save work samples. Again, uh, we're a small business here. So if if any of our employees leave and that's happened, we've had turnover, we ask them, please, you know, can you uh, back up what you were working on? Can you please put it in a file someplace that the next person can uh, retrieve it easily? So again, archive and uh, save work samples, but we'll add on to that. Don't be stealing stuff or don't be hiding stuff or don't be destroying stuff that would, you know, be sabotaged. That's totally not cool. That's a big investment and um, uh, podcast word. Not cool. Mm -hmm. So just be cool. (laughs) Always be cool, right? ABC, always be cool. Always be cool. Um, Also, uh, we're not talking about just your desk, right? Right. I mean, just clean up your work phone and your computer. Same idea. Just make sure, you know, that it's not just, you know, sanitized for COVID. I mean, obviously you should do that every day, but just have everything organized and just, you know, again, be, if you're- Give it back as it was given to you, right? I like that one, Brooke. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yes. hundred percent. Okay. So another one, and you know, we've all dealt with Cobra at some point. Cobra? Like the snake? No, not the snake. (laughs) Uh, The insurance. And, uh, you know, that is so expensive. And I think sometimes employees, when they're getting ready to leave, may not be thinking that far in advance, right? So when you're getting ready to leave, number six in your um, items to consider would be get information about your benefits Mm -hmm. and other employee-type plans, including health care. And that might be the biggest one, because if you quit your job, what are you going to do for health care? You might want to have some health insurance if you're going to quit your job, right? So with that, you mentioned the Consolidated <laughs> Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act. Yes. Is that COBRA? I guess that's COBRA. Okay, I don't COBRA. think I ever knew the full... Uh... <laughs> I know, right? So again, it's very important. And we all know that if we've ever um, separated from employment, that COBRA allows you to keep your current health care for basically the same price that you're paying now. And again, I'm not the expert, so talk to HR or talk to, um, you know, the people at COBRA, if you will, and uh, confirm your specific situation. But um, whatever your qualifying event is, meaning separation of service, anywhere from 18 to 36 months is what you can count on for your healthcare benefits to basically be the same as they are now. So that's a pretty important thing to consider. That is, especially if you have family, right? 100%. 
Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. That group plan, uh, the family plan, the family plan, the family plan. (laughs) And along with that, again, you might have restricted stock options. You might have four hundred one k plan or four hundred three b plan. You want to make sure that a you're not leaving anything behind. So you may have um, restricted stock or options, unvested stock or options. Um, Those are things you absolutely. So you could be leaving money on the table, right? Oh, for sure. Yes, I left a, a fair amount of money on the table when I left my prior job to uh, open this place. I made it, a, a, evaluated a decision and that I had some invested, um, you know, investments there, some stock and restricted options and whatever else. So yes, I left that uh, on the table. So just make sure I knew what I was doing, but uh, make right. sure so you don't look back and go, holy smack. What happened to my money? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes if it is a restricted stock or some other um, type of equity compensation, you have 30 days from post um, um, resignation to execute those. So just understand. And then your 401k or 403b, are you going to roll it over? And if so, uh, roll it to you know the new plan or to your own IRA. And uh, that's something else to talk about at another time. Okay, so there's um, some more aspects or more points that we, we should probably talk about. And what's so interesting is that they're not so much the the work side of it. They're more like the human side of it. Does that make sense? The human side the of The human it? side of is it. Is there a human element to yes, business? I think there is. Okay. Um, so, I mean, as far as, you know, you said, tell your boss before your colleagues, but also thank people, right? That thank- have helped you. Before we do that, let's schedule an exit interview. Oh, exit let's interviews. do that. Number seven. I mean, again, and this is one that it's kind of a touchy subject. Yeah. Most employers, if they're larger and have an HR department, it's almost part of protocol that they do. They want to have an exit interview with every person leaving because they want to do better. But if you're the person leaving, you're like, I don't really care. Right. That's your problem. You know, I'm not here to get pay me like a consulting fee. <laughs> so they really don't really want to get into it unless they really, really um, care. And that's great, but I think that's rare. Maybe the care is rare, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> but um, anyway, so yes, uh, we recommend number seven is schedule an exit interview with that said boss. Okay. So here we go. Maybe you um, tell your boss before the colleagues, and then the boss gives you a counter offer, and you say, hey, I'll come back in 24 hours with a reply. So then you say, how about we schedule an exit interview? Maybe that's how you could kind of sneak all that in there. Uh, that's stressful. Right? So yes, so that's what we recommend, best practice. But that one is certainly one that I understand some people decline to uh, want to offer it, and some people decline to give it. But you know, it's so interesting, and this is kind of a side topic, but uh, years ago when I did leave a different station and they wanted an exit interview, but it was seven months later. Okay. And I was, are you late? What's, right. what's going on? Right, right. <laughs> I don't even remember what happened now. Right, right. Um, so I thought that was kind of funny that it was so long before they, they chose should, to do the exit interview. They should send some kind of compensation. <laughs> I don't know if it's a Starbucks gift card or what. I'm or always down for that. You, you know? know that. Heck yeah. Yeah. But the next one, number eight that you uh, mentioned is thank those who had a positive impact on you. Right. We're all here. It's the race, the human race. We're all about love. I mean, we got to work. And sometimes there are situations that, um, you know, come into play that it's not pleasant. But seriously, like you may never see these people again. Maybe you'll become friends and stay friends after you leave. But at the end of the day, thank those and compliment those and um, celebrate those and let them know that they had a positive impact on you. Appreciate your mentorship. I appreciate whatever it was. Um, And that's just a you know, that's just a good feeling, good vibe. So, you know, what's so interesting, though, is that it is a small world. I hate that phrase, but it is so true. You can be at a different company. You can be in a different country or state even and run into somebody who you may have crossed paths with. And maybe it wasn't a good ending, right? hundred percent. And this is what the younger uh, listeners and viewers out there in YouTube don't understand. They mm-hmm. think they can just say it and it is, and, right? And the, you don't burn a bridge, Um they don't maybe don't know what that means, but look it up. Don't burn a bridge. So absolutely, a town like Metro Detroit and really any industry, if it's the automotive industry or if it's the you know music industry or the television industry or the you know, coal mining or oil, it's a small community. And so again, this podcast is for community. Mm-hmm. So with that, we'll say yes. You don't want to um, forget that people will remember what you did and how you did it. So you definitely want to uh, be positive on your way out, even if you are P-I-S-S-E-D. And as you walk out the door, you want some references. <laughs> and that goes back to number nine, right? So this See, is, it's all kind of tied in. Hello, <laughs> podcast <laughs> listeners and viewers. Hello, it's right. Keep it simple, stupid kiss. Right, kiss. So yes, say nice things and then say, hey, by the way, can I get a reference? Right. Just can sign I, here. <laughs> can I get a recommendation? And seriously, um, it, uh, recently, we're interviewing here, right? So if you're a 
good prospect, check us out on our website under employment opportunities. Um, and with that, we are checking references now because um, we have realized that, um, you know, that probably uh, will save us a little um, extra work later if we really reach out now and see, you know, why is this employee available? You know, why? So has that changed for you? Did you not check references so much before and now you are? Or I mean, yeah, it's not, hit or miss. Not really. I mean, again, I think they say, you know, again, big companies do things differently. Certainly it's, you know, put down three references and, and all right, this and sure. that, your last manager and all this. And so we um, don't follow a strict formula that way. We certainly ask for them and we mentioned that we uh, will let you know if we're going to reach out. But now again, we're taking it a little bit maybe more serious than we used to because we recognize that, again, there's... 93% of the people that are not happy at their jobs and one out of three are looking to leave. And so if they've left, if they've already gone through this list and they're gone and they're coming here, we want to understand why, you know? And so um, again, all of this is important that we're talking about so far for the employee, mm -hmm. but we're also going to give a few uh, for the employers, but they kind of go hand in hand. So um, yes, uh, you want to make sure that if the Employee, uh, employee is going to a new company that asks for references and recommendations. Uh, you haven't burned every bridge at the place you're leaving right. and uh, left the right way. So that's number nine, ask for and offer references and recommendations. Okay, so number 10 is something you kind of touched on a little while ago, but is very important because it could affect your financial future. Yes, we're going to tie in uh, financial in, uh, <laughs> opportunities and investment acumen here at Great Lakes Wealth and the What Do We Do podcast. So number 10 is prepare to roll over your retirement account. We're assuming if you've listened to any of our last uh, podcasts, our prior podcasts, that you understand that you should have been investing in your 401k or 403b at your employer. And so when you're leaving, you have a choice. You can leave it there for a period, but ultimately need to roll it over either into uh, an IRA or you can transfer it to your new company's 401k or 403b. So maybe have all that stuff set up ahead of time as well, um, because once you go to your new job, you may not uh, have the right paperwork. It takes a little longer to ask for these forms and all that sort of thing. So um, yes, number 10 is make sure you have all of your retirement accounts in order before you make the move. Okay, number 11, bonus question. This is huge. The bonus Bonus time. Yep. I mean, this is it. It's extra hours over here at What Do We Do Podcast. So the bonus, we just talked about it, 10 of them. If you summed up all 10, mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you summed them all up, Brooke, I'll even ask you, I think you would get it. What would number 11, the bonus be if we just summed up all 10? Leave on good terms. Leave on good terms. Come on. Whatever, whatever form that takes, whatever that is in your world, leave on good terms period, end of story. With that, I'll say booyah. Hey guys, it's Brooke. I want to take a minute to talk to you about Dewey Stefan and his great team at Great Lakes Wealth. Do you feel overwhelmed managing your assets? Well, Great Lakes Wealth offers Wall Street solutions with Main Street values. That is really what they are all about. They will help you develop a custom financial plan utilizing all of your assets and keeping your goals in mind. That is what Great Lakes Wealth is all about, helping you and your family achieve your financial dreams. So go to Great Lakes wealth.us to schedule an appointment today and tell them Brooke sent you. Okay. Do we have, we have time for, uh, to touch on the employer side of things, right? Uh, just real quick. What do employers need to know about this great resignation and can they stop it? Yes. There's the yin and the yang. There's the teeter and the totter. <laughs> I mean, there's uh, there's black and there's white, there's up and there's down, right? So with all of that, we have to, uh, understand that, uh, the employers might want to recognize that employees are not happy. 93%. <laughs> That's a lot. Don't like their job enough that it's their dream job. One in three want to leave, mm -hmm. right? So with that, yes, we have a few uh, tips for employers that maybe uh, be proactive in overall. Just make sure that you're thinking about this. And if you see uh, an employee that, uh, you know, doesn't seem like they're uh, with the same mojo as they once had, again, don't just ignore it. You know, maybe talk, try to, to, them, talk right? to them and figure it out. Right. So we're going to uh, mention uh, four um, you know, thoughts, four ideas, four steps, maybe that you as an employer can get out in front of this train, if you will, or at least uh, be a good employer in terms of helping your employees to live their best life when they're under, um, you know, your watch in the, um, in the business, if you will. So, um, number one is talk it out, get to the root of the problem. If you see that they're unhappy or you see there's something going on, don't just walk the other way. Don't just figure it to work itself out. 
get to the root of the problem. Ask them what What's is going on. up. Yes, for sure. And then talk it out and then understand and listen. I guess that would be part of it. Listen. Um, and then number two. I love this one. Show appreciation. Hand over the Starbucks card. Show appreciation. Gold star. <laughs> gold star. I'm going to have employee of the right. week and everyone's going to win it. Um, you can't, again, on a serious note, you can't overdo this too and, and make it kind of, you know, that it's in, insulting. That it, right. it has to be meaningful for sure. But again, this doesn't mean you show appreciation just to the person that, you know, you noticed is upset yesterday. In general, you should carry yourself like this all the time, but recognize that by showing appreciation, your employees uh, will have a little bit more respect for you. And a lot of times it's just what they want. They want acknowledgement. They want to know that uh, what they they're doing. They want that a girl or that a boy, right? That a girl, that a boy. You got it. And then um, the next one is offer support. If there's something going on, don't just say, hey, you know, good luck with that. Right. None of my business that's you at got night. This. You got yeah. this. Offer support. And that could be in the office. Certainly it could be in um, some of their training, uh, you know, whatever their role is and things that they may need to do um, during, you know, the work day. But also if it's if it's uh, in their personal life or whatever it is, offer to support, offer to help and a uh, everyone needs that and everyone, you know, would appreciate that period in the story. So, and, you know, I do think that uh, we've heard time and again during this pandemic and the great resignation, everything else, that support is becoming more the norm, you know, uh, as far as touching base with your employees and checking on them and their mental health and the Zoom happy hours, all of that kind of speaks to this. It, it does. Absolutely. Right. And um, no matter what size your business is, if you're the business owner, you can observe what other companies do out there. Um, there are lists like, you know, best places to work in whatever city. There are major corporations out there like Google or Facebook or, again, any of the ones in Silicon Valley that, you know, they have uh, more flexible work time or flexible work environments. And when they first started these things uh, decades ago, the suit and tie business mm -hmm. world with briefcase was like, you can't do that. You can't have casual Fridays, let alone have uh, foosball tables. Let alone bring your dog to work. Bring your dog <laughs> to work and then have dry erase boards where you can just write on the wall and on the floor and all this. But this is, again, this is creates a uh, community, mm -hmm. creates uh, creativity. And so uh, you have to recognize what, um, you know, your employees um, may want or need and you want to work with them. Also, you know, it's not the um, inmates running the asylum, so to speak. So you have to have a good balance. And I think it goes back to communication. Okay, so the great resignation, we know it's underway. We hope people will really uh, think about these uh, check, you know, these checkpoints that we've mentioned, because it's all to help the future, right? And help them find their dream job. It's to help everyone live their best life. We're going to do our little part here. This is serious business, the great resignation. And so we'll talk about in a future podcast, Brooke, about the supply and demand aspects of this. There are currently over 11 million job openings out there, okay? According to current surveys, there's over 11 million jobs available, and there's only 9.5 million people looking for jobs, so even if everyone out there looking for a job got a job, mm -hmm. we would still have 1.5 million extra jobs. So I guess if you're looking for a side hustle, right. this would be your chance. <laughs> or guess what? That's called supply and demand. And so when demand is greater than supply, that means that prices go up. This is this other economic word. Do you know inflation. what I'm saying? Inflation. Inflation is right? on the rise. So there is. There is an employee or a labor inflation. So we'll talk more about that in a different podcast for sure. But absolutely this is so timely with so many people wanting to live their best life and recognizing um, where they're currently at may not be it. So along those terms, I have two quotes okay. to end the show today, Brooke. All right. First one is from this guy, George Carlin. Have you heard of him? Of course. Amazing. George Carlin once said, most people work just hard enough not to get fired and get paid just enough not to quit. Makes sense? It does. Love George Carlin. Mm -hmm. Some people are just skating by, <laughs> cruising by, just trying to hang on, and just uh, they're not trying to uh, live to work. They're trying to work to live. Exactly. Is that right? Yep. And I think this one is really, um, it hits home to me and uh, maybe to some of our viewers or uh, podcast listeners out there. And I will say one more time, make sure you download, make sure you rate, make sure you share, make sure you like, tell a friend, send this to two, and uh, our community is all about you. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yep. Uh, so Tim Cook once said, work takes on new meaning when you feel you are pointed in the right direction. Otherwise, it's just a job and life is too short for that. And there it is. There it is. With that, 
Brooke, I'm going to say this is episode 46. I hope that everyone out there lives their best life. And with that, we're just getting Getting started. started. (laughs) The opinions expressed in this program are for general information purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or any specific security. It's only intended to provide education about the financial industry. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult your financial advisor prior to investing. Any past performance discussed during this program is no guarantee of future results. Any indices referenced for comparison are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. As always, please remember investing involves risks and possible loss of principal capital. Please seek advice from a licensed professional.